Hi everyone and assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Jaman Khan and today we are going to discuss management of locally advanced breast cancer. So let's start with this scenario. A 65 years old lady presents with the fungating growth in upper outer quadrant of her left breast for one year. There are large axillary lymph nodes as well on the ipsilateral side. How you will evaluate this patient? Well, you will evaluate this patient via triple assessment, which includes clinical examination, imaging, and biopsy. If you recall the scenario, the growth in this patient has fungated. That is, is this ulcerated through the skin? So in this case, we don't need a true cut biopsy. We can simply go for ulcer edge biopsy. And we will send the specimen for histopathology. Additionally, we will also want some receptor status studies to see whether this patient is ER, that is estrogen receptor, PR, that is progesterone adapts receptor, her to new receptor positive. Besides this, you can also have KI67 index to see the prognosis of the disease. Why we need these receptors status before? Because probably this patient is not a candidate for surgery right now. And she will need to have her disease downstaged first by chemotherapy. After that, the disease will be operable. So according to these receptor status, the breast cancer has been divided into different subtypes. For example, the HR positive, that is hormonal receptor positive. By HR positive, we mean both ER, that is estrogen receptor, and PR, that is progesterone receptor positive, and HER2 negative. If the patient is HR positive and HER2 negative, we call it a luminal A. 73% of all breast cancer cases, they are of this type. And they are associated with best prognosis. The other type is HR negative and HER2 negative. That is also known as the triple negative disease. It comprises of 13% of all the breast cancer cases, and it is associated with the worst prognosis. The third one is HR positive and HER2 positive, which is also known as luminal B type. It comprises of 10% of the all breast cancer cases. HR negative or HER2 positive, it comprises of 5% of all the breast cancer cases. Before moving on to the management of locally advanced breast cancer, can we recall breast cancer staging? Well, we have different cancer staging systems. 
This one is DNM staging. That is based on the tumor size, lymph nodes, and metastasis. We call it a T1 if the tumor size is less than two centimeters. We call it a T2 if the tumor size is two to five centimeters. We call it a T3 if the tumor size is more than five centimeters. We call it a T4 if the tumor extends to the skin or chest wall. We call it M0 if there are no lymph nodes. We call it an N1 if the, there are metastases to the ipsilateral lymph nodes and they become mobile and palpable. We call it an N2 if the lymph nodes, they are palpable and they are fixed. We call it an N3 if the metastasis go to infraclavicular or supraclavicular lymph nodes. Some surgeons also call M3 as M1, as distant metastasis. When you call it a T4, it means there are certain changes in the skin. And what are those changes? Those changes could be in the form of puckering, in the form of beauty orange, nodule formation, discoloration, or ulceration. Puckering occurs when the skin is pulled by an underlying cancer. We call it a beauty orange when there is obstruction of the skin lymphatics by invasion of the cancer cells, and that causes edema. It makes the breast skin a characteristic appearance like an orange peel. That's why it's called beauty orange. There could be different nodule formation on the skin, or it can ulcerate through the skin. Metastatic workup includes ultrasound abdomen, chest x-rays, bone scan, to see mats in liver, lungs, and bone. Alternatively, you can have a CT chest, CT abdomen, and CT brain to see mats in these areas. So this is Manchester staging system for breast cancer. And this states, we stage it a stage zero if there is carcinoma in situ. We call it a stage one if the disease is confined to the breast only. We call it a stage two if the axillary lymph nodes, they're also involved. We call it a stage three if the lump gets fixed to the skin or chest wall. And a stage four if distant metastases are present. From management point of view, we divide breast cancer into three distinct types. We call it an early breast cancer if it is stage zero, stage one, or stage two breast cancer. We call it a locally advanced breast cancer if it is stage three breast cancer. And we call it a metastatic breast cancer if it is a stage four breast cancer. So how you will define 
a locally, locally advanced breast cancer. We will call stage three breast cancer as a locally advanced breast cancer. And what treatment you will offer to a patient with locally advanced breast cancer? So this patient, since doesn't seem to be in a condition that she can be operated right and now, she initially will need to have her stage, to have her disease downstaged by new adjuvant chemotherapy, which will shrink the size of the tumor. It should be followed by modified radical mastectomy. That should be followed by adjuvant chemotherapy. If the patient is found to have hormonal receptor positive, she may be a good candidate for hormonal therapy as well. When we talk about systemic chemotherapy, we either say it's a new adjuvant chemotherapy or adjuvant chemotherapy. And what is the difference between these two? We call it a new adjuvant chemotherapy if it is given preoperatively. We call it an adjuvant chemotherapy if it is given postoperatively. The rationale behind giving a new adjuvant chemotherapy is that it makes non-operable tumor into operable ones. It downstages the disease. There are examples in which cases the tumor completely melts away after chemotherapy. And these were the cases in which you can also offer organ preservation in the form of breast conservation surgery rather than modified radical mastectomy. And other advantage is you can check sensitivity for certain type of treatments. The advantages of adjuvant chemotherapy includes it helps to kill micro metastasis at in and it increases disease free survival so the new adjuvant chemotherapy in breast cancer is indicated in stage 3 or t4 in inflammatory breast cancer and in involvement of ipsilateral, supra or infraclavicular lymph nodes. Other indications could be desire for breast conservation surgery after biopsy or lumpectomy. In the case of medical contraindications to surgery because of the patient fitness issues and selectively in pregnant women in third trimester of pregnancy. Recommended regimes could be anthracycline-based or tagfanes or trastuzumab. So these are the most commonly used agents which are used in the chemotherapy of the breast cancer. Chemotherapy is associated with some major side effects. This is the typical facies of a patient who undergoes chemotherapy. The side effects of breast chemotherapy can be early 
or can be late. The early side effects appear up to six months. And the late side effects appear from six months onwards to the lifetime. Early side effects include cytopenias, fatigue, alopecia, or loss of hair, musculoskeletal pain, chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy, and neurocognitive dysfunction. The late side effects may include cardiomyopathy, psychological effects, early menopause, or problems with the fertility. These are the effects of chemotherapy on the body. There are lost or sparse eyelashes, lost fragile split nails, lost or thinning of the hair, lost or thinning of the eyebrows, dry, sore, chapped lips, dry, ulcerated mouth, dry skin, swollen, blisters, hand and feet. After the initial downstaging with the chemotherapy and locally advanced breast cancer, most of the times you go for a modified radical mastectomy. Yes, there are selective cases in which tumor completely melts away or is reduced to a size, then breast conservation surgery is also possible. The modified radical mastectomy includes removal of the breast tissue and axillary lymph nodes. Pectoralis, muscle, pectoralis major muscle is not removed. The three modifications to this procedure include patties, scanlons, and Aachen claws. So this is how a left modified radical mastectomy is performed. An elliptical incision is given onto the breast. The section is mated. Flaps are raised. And whole of the breast tissue along with the axillary tail and up to the level two axillary lymph nodes, they are removed. And the skin flaps, they are closed. If there is an initial scar of previous surgery or lumpectomy, the incision of modified radical mastectomy can be modified to incorporate that previous scar into this surgery. So axillary dissection is made to remove axillary lymph nodes and the different levels are named. These levels are defined by pectoralis minor muscle. We call it a level one if the lymph nodes, they are present lateral to the pectoralis minor muscle. We call it a level two, if the lymph nodes, they are present posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle. And we call it a level three, if the lymph nodes, they are medial to the pectoralis minor muscle. There are three important nerves that you will come across while doing modified radical mastectomy or while doing axillary dissection. And these nerves are long thoracic nerve, which supplies to the serratus anterior muscle, and it is present on the lateral chest wall. 
a trachodorsal nerve, which supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle and runs over that muscle. An intercostal brachial nerve that supplies the sensory nerve supply to the medial arm and axilla. So usually it is the level one lymph nodes that, that is lateral to the pectoralis minor muscle that are involved first. The level three lymph nodes probably will not be involved if the level one and level two lymph nodes are not involved. This is another picture showing or giving you a better idea of the location of these levels. They have been colored differently and they go from downwards to upwards towards the infraclavicular region. The level one being in the axilla, the level three being in the infraclavicular region, and the level two lies in between these two levels. The other types of mastectomies could be simple mastectomy, in which you remove the entire breast, like you do in the modified radical mastectomy. But the difference here is you don't remove axillary lymph nodes. An extensive form of surgery in the breast could be radical or Halstead mastectomy. That is rarely performed nowadays because it also involves removal of the pectoralis major muscle. This type of mastectomy was used to done in ancient times before the advent of the chemotherapy drugs because in the cases when the pectoralis major muscle was also involved along with that. But after the advent of the chemotherapy drugs, now if we find a tumor that is fixed to the pectoralis muscle, we will first downstage it with chemotherapy. And after successful downregulation, we may go for a modified radical mastectomy. Disadvantages of this radical surgery were bad scars and unacceptable deformity and reduced range of mobility of shoulder because of the removal of pectoralis major muscle along with the specimen. Hormonal therapy depends on the presence of estrogen and progesterone receptors. If the patient is ER or PR receptor positive, she is a candidate for hormonal therapy. Well, you give hormonal therapy, depending on the patient is in premenopausal age group or in postmenopausal age group. In the premenopausal age group, you will either choose to block the estrogen receptors or you will cause suppression of estrogen synthesis. To block the estrogen receptors, you can give tamoxifen 20 milligram per day, which is useful for not only for treatment, but also for chemo prevention. The other method is suppression of estrogen synthesis. That is either by co caused by ovarian ablation
which is done by different methods. You can do it surgically by doing oropharectomy, or you can ir cause a radiation of ovaries, or a chemo-induced amenorrhea can be called. Then ovarian separation can be done by luteinizing hormone releasing hormone agonist or gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist. In the case of the postmenopausal woman, your choice is aromatase inhibitors like anastrozole or latrozole. If the patient is HER2 new receptor positive, you give trastuzumab. There are different brands that could be available, but Herceptin is the commonly known one. In the initial slides, I have talked about KI67. And what is KI67? It's a protein that is a cellular marker for proliferation. It is used to assess tumor prognosis. KI67 index is defined as percent tumor cells straining positive by immunohistochemistry. Its overexpression is frequently associated with worse prognosis. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video. Thank you very much. See you next time.